discuss the situation in Japan, as well as his latest book. We're joined by Dr. Michio Kaku, a Japanese-American physicist, a best-selling author, professor of theoretical physics at City University of New York and the City College of New York. His brand-new book is Physics of the Future, How Science Will Change Daily Life by 2100. Welcome to Democracy Now! It's great to see you again. Glad to be on the show, Amy. So, talk about uh, this raising of the category level to seven uh, on a par with Chernobyl. Well, uh, Tokyo Electric has been in denial, trying to downplay the full impact of this nuclear accident. However, there's a formula, a mathematical formula by which you can determine what level this accident is. This accident has already released something on the order of 50,000 trillion becquerels of radiation. You do the math. That puts it right smack in the middle of a level 7 nuclear accident. Still less than Chernobyl. However, radiation is... continuing to leak out of the reactors. The situation is not stable at all. So you're looking at basically a ticking time bomb. It appears stable, but the slightest disturbance, a secondary earthquake, a pipe break, uh, evacuation of the crew at uh, Fukushima, could set off a full-scale meltdown at three nuclear power stations, far beyond what we saw at Chernobyl. Um Talk about exactly, I mean, as a physicist, to explain to people exactly what has taken place in Japan at these nuclear power plants. Think of driving a car, and the car all of a sudden lunges out of control. You hit the brakes. The brakes don't work. That's because the earthquake wiped out the safety systems in the first minute of the earthquake and tsunami. Then your radiator starts to heat up and explodes. That's the hydrogen gas explosion. And then to make it worse, the gas tank is heating up, and all of a sudden, your whole car is going to be in flames. That's the full-scale meltdown. So what do you do? You drive the car into a river. That's what the utility did by putting seawater, seawater from the Pacific Ocean, in a desperate attempt to keep water on top of the core. But then seawater has salt in it, and that gums up your radiator. And so what do you do? You call out the local firemen. And so now you have these Japanese samurai warriors. They know that this is potentially a suicide mission. They're coming in with hose water, hose water, trying to keep water over the melted nuclear reactor cores. So that's the situation now. So when the utility says that things are stable, it's only stable in the sense that you're dangling from a cliff, hanging by your fingernails, and as the time goes by, each fingernail starts to crack. That's the situation now. What about the food, the level of contamination of the food? They're increasingly banning food exports. The tragedy is this accident has released enormous quantities of iodine, radioactive iodine-131, into the atmosphere, like what happened at Chernobyl, about 10 percent the level of Chernobyl. Iodine is water-soluble. When it rains, it gets into the soil. Cows then eat the vegetation, create milk, and then it winds up in the, the milk. Farmers are now dumping milk uh, right on their farms because it's too radioactive. Foods have to be impounded in the area. And let's be blunt about this. Would you buy food that says made in Chernobyl? And the Japanese people are also saying, what, should I buy food that says made in Fukushima? We're talking about the collapse of the local economy. Just because the, the government tries to lowball all the numbers, uh, downplay the severity of the accident, and that's making it much worse. What do you think has to be done now? I mean, one of the biggest problems is secrecy, uh, both with the uh, Tokyo company uh, that runs the plants and also the government, the constant downplaying from the beginning. And yet there are so many people who have been evacuated who are demanding compensation. There was just a major protest at TEPCO with the people in the area who have been evacuated, no jobs, no money, saying we demand compensation. Well, TEPCO is like the little Dutch boy. All of a sudden, we have cracks in the dike. You put a finger here, you put a finger there, and all of a sudden, new leaks start to occur, and they're overwhelmed. I suggest that they be removed from leadership entirely and be put as consultants. An international team of top physicists and engineers should take over with the authority to use the Japanese military. I think the Japanese military is the only organization capable of bringing this raging accident under control. And that's
that's what Gorbachev did in 1986. He saw this flaming nuclear power station in Chernobyl. He called out the Red Air Force. He called out helicopters, tanks, armored personnel carriers, and buried the Chernobyl reactor in 5,000 tons of cement, sand, and boric acid. That's, of course, a last-ditch effort, but I think the Japanese military should be called out. To do? Because of the fact that the radiation levels are so great, workers can only go in for perhaps 10 minutes, 15 minutes at a time, and they get their year's dose of radiation. You're there for one hour, and you have radiation sickness. You vomit. Your, your white corpus account goes down. Your hair falls out. You're there for a day, and you get a lethal amount of radiation. At Chernobyl, there were 600,000 people mobilized, each one going in for just a few minutes, dumping sand, concrete boric acid onto the reactor site. Each one got a medal. That's what it took to bring one raging nuclear accident under control. And I think the utility here is simply outclassed and overwhelmed. And yet these workers are in for much longer periods of time. That's right. And we don't even know how much radiation levels they're getting because many areas around the site have no monitors. So we don't even know how much radiation many of these workers are getting. And that's why I'm saying if you have access to the military, you can have the option of sandbagging the reactor, encasing it in concrete, or at least have a reserve of, of troops that can go in for brief periods of time and bring this monster under control. What about the evacuation zone? Is it big enough? It's pathetic. The United States government has already stated 50 miles for evacuating U.S. personnel. The French government has stated that, that all French people should consider leaving the entire islands. And here we are with the government talking about 6 miles, 10 miles, 12 miles. And the people there are wondering, what's going on with the government? I mean, why aren't they telling us the truth? Radiation levels are now rising 25 miles from the site, far beyond the evacuation zone. And remember, Remember that we could see an increase in leukemia, we could see an increase in thyroid cancers. That's the inevitable consequence of releasing enormous quantities of iodine into the environment. What has to happen to the plant, ultimately? Well, in the best case scenario, this is the scenario devised by the utility itself. They hope to bring it under control by the end of this year. By the end of this year, they hope to have the pumps working and the reaction is finally stabilized by the end of this year. Oddly, it's sounding a little bit like BP when they were trying to um, pl plug up the hole. Right. It will happen. It will happen. They're literally making it up as they go along. We're in totally uncharted territories. You get any nuclear engineering book, look at the last chapter, and this scenario is not contained in the last chapter of any nuclear engineering textbook on the planet Earth. So they're making it up as they go along. And we are the guinea pigs for this science experiment that's taking place.